Hi guys, um, so I've just um, 3D printed the parts that make up the magnet switch that goes on the logger. So um, I think it printed out nicely, at least um, for something that has so much um, interconnecting holes, the structure does seem to be um, quite printable, so that's good. And the clearance also seems to be pretty good. I mean, it rolls um, in there pretty, pretty well. But as you might have guessed, um, being the first print, nothing fits. So um, these are the magnets that are supposed to go in here. The hole is clearly too small. So um, I did print a new magnet switch. And as you can see, I was able to fix the um, magnet studs. I've made the holes too big this time around. So everything just slides in the holes I created for them. So obviously I would have to do, hopefully, one more adjustment. But the good news is this does work and I can turn off and turn on the uh, magnetic field in this. In this um, position, nothing. Um, the magnet switch is not um, magnetic at all. So 60 degrees, let me just hold it like this. You can see. Yeah, that's yeah, way, way more magnetic. You can see. Yeah, super cool, right? I mean, that's just the LED, but essentially everything that needs to work to make this um, a mobile logger does. So um, I have the ESP32, obviously the main controller. I have um, behind the board, the P mini PCIe board that um, holds the GSM chip, which is also currently handling the GPS. I'll explain that later on, but this also works. You can, okay, it's currently not powered on, but um, what else, what else? Um, obviously the battery works, um, as you can see from the board being on. Um, so essentially, let me just list out the essentials for me. So once I can get the sensor data from the SCN55, which is supposed to go here and plug into um, this port here. I've already tried that. It's currently not here because it's quite um, large and the wires are currently a bit finicky, but I can communicate with the SCN55 and get sensor data from it. Also, um, I have an SD card here so I can store the data being read um, directly on the SD card and I can always um, refer to that again. Yeah, and then GPS, obviously, GPS is quite important. So um, this is the GPS antenna, and as I said, the A9G chip, which is a GP, um, GSM chip, is also currently handling the um, the GPS for this board. That's because um, the actual GPS chip that I put on here, um, the antenna I got for this is actually not matched to this um, chip. So I'll have to come back to, come back to this, although, I was able to communicate with it and I was able to get information from it, but because the antenna is mismatched, it, it was not able to um, get a lock on the satellite. So, but this works and I can actually get um, pretty accurate positioning from this. Essentially, this is very similar to what I did in um, the first version of the logger, which is the ESDK version. But yeah, that's it. Everything that needs to work on this PCB works right so that's like very very exciting for me so the next time you're probably going to see this pcb it will be um going into the final enclosure that will make up the um the mobile um air quality logger v2 as as you as you may be aware of so so the pile you see here are the parts that would make up the new mobile air quality logger i have the main half of the pcb which holds most of the important parts that is required for um, the mobile air quality, air quality, which holds most of the important parts that's required for the mobile air quality logger to function as it should. So that's the main, um, the main half of the PCB. Then I have a GPS um, antenna as well as a GSM antenna, LiPo battery, um, the parts for one half of the magnet switch, this um, CNC cuts base plates, some button, some prints for some, 
some prints to make up the buttons for um, testing the logger once it's put together. Some magnets as well as some metal dowels. One fully assembled half of the magnet switch. So hopefully um, this part will come together nicely and we have ourselves a new mobile air quality logger.